hello everyone we're just waiting for people to finish joining uh, so we're going to give a couple of minutes before we make a start So, good evening, everyone. We're waiting for more people to join. I can still see there's still people joining. So we're not going to start yet. But if you could um, introduce yourself in the chat, that would be great. We're just going to wait for one more minute for people to join and then we'll make a start. Right. I think we should make a, a start now to make sure that we have enough time to cover what we want to cover. Um, this session is about uh, surviving and thriving in your teacher training year. Um, I'm Vicky Goff from the British Council and we manage the Language Teacher Training Scholars Programme on behalf of the British Council. I don't know if there are any scholars here, but if there are, please uh, uh, let me know in the chat. Welcome. Um, the British Council, as you may know, teaches English all over the world, but we're also really um, keen, really, we think it's really important that UK pupils learn other languages, that our pupils have the same opportunities to become multilingual as uh, people do in other countries. Um, so we're really interested in uh, different things about language learning. We have um, an annual survey for teachers called Language Trends, which we put out for teachers. And we provide lots of opportunities um, for teachers to bring their world into their classroom. That might be through providing language assistance or giving you the opportunity to uh, match with um, schools from other countries and do joint curriculum projects and something or, or, or something like that. So as you become a teacher, please keep in touch with us uh, to keep up with our initiatives, our activities and our resources during your career as a languages teacher so you can bring the world into your classroom. So it's more than just about learning languages, it's about learning cultures as well. Uh, so that's me. And so I'm going to introduce three speakers who are going to give you some of their top tips for surviving and thriving in your training year. And so first of all, I'm going to pass over to Pilar. Hi, good evening, everyone. It's uh, such a pleasure to be talking to you uh, this evening. Uh, yeah, my name is Pilar. I am a Memphis teacher. I teach Spanish and German uh, in St. Albans um, in a big comprehensive secondary school. And I came into teaching from a previous career in the corporate world. And I would like to share with you um, very practical things that really helped me um, five years ago when I did my training. So um, I am going to, to focus on those three things that you can see in my slide. The first one is be inspired. And as, as, um, as a teacher of languages, you will be about to join or you will have joined um, a, a community, a bunch of amazing human beings, very creative people. And um, please know that whenever you feel out of breath or overwhelmed during your uh, teacher training, yeah, which could happen, um, you can reach out to this community and feel inspired and, and overcome any difficulties. Uh, for me, in regard to these, um, I have a couple of uh, things that I would like to share. Uh, very important for me in my training year and, and to, to, to make me feel inspired and to be inspired were, were these things. So the first one um, was the Association for Language Learning. Um, I joined the association in my during my training year, and I think um, um, Dr. Rivzer is going to talk about that a bit later tomorrow about OAL and and um, different things you can find in there. But I find this is the best way to keep on top of all the developments that go on in the MFL um, world. 
And they have an amazing annual conference that happens every year around March. Uh, it's called the Language Wall. Um, I, I attended a couple of times and it's amazing. Uh, you can meet uh, many of the speakers that have been attending or given talks in the language show uh, throughout the weekend face to face there. Uh, um, and it's fantastic. Um, they also have a lovely magazine called Languages Today. And if you become a member, you can uh, join their fantastic uh, flat and flagship research journal, which I think is uh, invaluable. All the things um, that help me uh, feel inspired and, and keep going, Facebook, uh, there are many groups in there um, uh, that, uh, in which you can find amazing uh, discussions and very generous people sharing all sorts of resources that you can um, download and then perhaps tweak. Um, if you want ideas on a specific ones, I could share the ones I, um, I, I, some of the ones I like. One of them is the, is the, the very famous uh, Global Innovative Language Teachers uh, that was founded by um, Dr. Conti and Steve Smith is one that even um, regardless of the pedagogy you advocate or the style that you like, uh, you can find fantastic resources in there and, and discussions. There are um, others like we teach MFL or more specific ones like, um, for instance, in Spanish, the A-level uh, teaching group or specific groups about um, films or books that you might be teaching. In, this, in the Spanish case, you could, you could find a group about La Casa de Bernarda Alba or the fantastic film from Almodóvar Volver. So uh, definitely somewhere to, to keep an eye on. Um, there are also some amazing blogs uh, in the MFL world and for the MFL community from fantastic researchers and educators. Um, I will uh, perhaps share them, my, my, uh, the, the ones I, I consult the, the most. Um, and, and in the Spanish case is, is the blog for Esmeralda Salgado. Um, lovely blog with um, amazing ideas and um, resources, pedagogy, everything you can find. In, in, in the German case, perhaps the one from uh, Silvia Basto is one that I really love. Um, there's many out there, but I just wanted to give you one, you know, one example. If you happen to teach a Spanish of Ge or, or German, these are the ones that I um, um, continuously go to and, and um, yeah, and enjoy. And what else? I'm looking at my notes because I, I wrote a lot of ideas here. Um, and then, um, obviously, if you look in um, Twitter and you follow the hashtag, the hashtag, the MFL Twitter at the hashtag, you will, you will be um, surprised with how many things um, educators and researchers and teachers sharing there is fantastic. Um, okay, and going on to my second point, uh, um, I think um, this is about behavior management. I think one of the concerns or the worries for um, uh, teachers starting their careers, it was certainly for me, um, uh, was behavior management and, and management and being able to manage behavior. And, and I thought a lot about this and, and I would say this is not an innate quality. Uh, you can learn um, how to manage behavior. Um, and obviously depending on, on the school that you teach, you will feel more or less worried about this aspect of the profession. But I would like to share with you um, two books that really help me and still help me today. And I think they will always help me. Um, um, one of them, is this fantastic book by Tom uh, Bennett, Running the Room is great, especially if they read on a script uh, is invaluable. And then there is another one which really uh, touched my heart um, and is Classroom Behavior by Bill Rogers. This is, um, this is a fantastic book which contemplates endless scenarios and I think is written, written from a place of love um, it's humanity is unbelievable, and if it's a it's a it's a chunk of a book, but I'm gonna give you a tip um, um, about where to start. Uh, my favorite chapter in that book is one called "The Language of Behavior Management and Discipline," 
and there uh, Bill Rogers lays out a framework um, for, manage for management and discipline language skills. And you can find amazing things like um, strategies, tactical ignoring, tactical pausing, uh, descriptive language, um, how to describe what's, what's going on in a class, especially if you want to, um, um, if you are trying to um, appease a group of um, teenagers or uh, you, you're trying to get them to listen to you. Um, there is also a lovely conversation that you can access um, in Oli Lovell's website um, between um, Bill Rogers and Oli himself, um, and is 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 really is really lovely. Um, they really helped me these books. Um, and please give yourself, I would say, give yourself time to develop yourself as, as a teacher, to develop a set of skills or behavior management skills, to find your voice. Um and and yeah, be assured that this is something that you can learn and um and can be great at and enjoy. And then my my last point, um, I hope I'm not uh, talking too much, but please stop me, um, Vicky, if I am. <laughs> um, there is time. The, the the one is called be yourself. You're your best resource. There are uh, going to be times. Well. Well, you perhaps are going to feel a little bit overwhelmed um, during your training year. As new um, teachers, we tend to spend a lot of time on lesson planning. We, we, we tend to come up with the perfect lesson every time or the lesson that will make us feel confident um, in front of our students. Um, and I would say that um, you are you have to remember that the most important resource that you have is yourself um and i think children pupils will remember you for who you are and not for that listening um exercise or that uh writing task that uh you thought it was amazing and i'm sure it was amazing um but i think if you have your ability the ability to engage with children to to make them feel that they are valuable members of your classroom. Uh, and then on top of that, you have a little repertoire of lessons that you um, can use where uh, you feel overwhelmed or you feel stressed. Um, uh, these are important things. Um, um, yeah, don't try to be perfect. T try and be yourself. Put together a lesson that you can pull out when you feel tired um with uh tasks that you can easily scaffold perhaps you want to have a, repert a repertoire for scaffolding tasks as well one or two lessons that you can use in in these situations i have a couple myself i can share if you are interested um uh, but yeah um ultimately i think we have all joined um a profession where we are surrounded by endless creative energy and we give a lot and invest a lot a lot of our own energy but we get so uh, much in return so yeah I have never looked back I am fully enjoying my my teaching career and I thought I thought I hope you you will do too and that's it from me <laughs> brilliant thank you so much Pilar that was that was really great um, and I'm sure there'll be some questions for you at the end, but I'm going to pass over now to Tom for your contribution. Hi, everybody. Good evening. My name's uh, Tom Ricketts and I'm a secondary languages teacher in Coventry. Uh, and I'm also the head of year 11 this year. Um, I trained six years ago. I was a school direct trainee, trainee um, but I was also a British, Lang a British Council scholar. Um, and in the last year, I've also been part of the British Council scholarship interview process. Um, I did a Spanish and linguistics degree at the University of York. And on my year abroad, I was a British Council language assistant. So I feel like they have um, played a really big role in kind of forming me and, and molding me as a, as a languages teacher and in my language learning journey. Um, I have been a very bad teacher and written a lot on the slides. 
Um, but I'll try not to read off of it and I'll just leave it there for you to kind of digest and I'll talk through some of some of the things that I have, have suggested as my top tips. Um, the first one from me is to really try to take advantage of every possible CPD, that's a continued professional development or training opportunity that's available to you. And you'll find as a, as a trainee that there's lots and lots of free opportunities um, for you. And I would really, really encourage you to, to take advantage of that. It's a really good opportunity for you to consume lots and lots of new uh, ideas and strategies and hints and tips from people that are industry experts. Um, and we talk about the concepts of magpieing. We talk about this to the, to the students, magpieing ideas. But as teachers, we can magpie a lot as well. And we steal and we take all the good stuff. Um, and then we just use it ourselves. And that part of training is magpieing from other more experienced teachers and having a go at something and reflecting on whether it's worked. And if it has, great, you do it again. And if it hasn't, you think about why and then you try something different. That's the beauty of training to be a teacher is that you get the chance to be experimental. So these opportunities for extra training and extra CPD give you that chance to learn something new that maybe you hadn't thought of before. And then you have a go in the classroom and eventually over time, you will gradually build up your own niche, your own skill um, as a teacher and your own teaching style. And that continuously changes. But as time goes on, you'll feel more and more comfortable and more and more confident in the classroom. And opportunities like these can really, really help with that. It's also really useful kind of as you progress and as you work up, as you move up the, the career ladder because it's just really, really useful to add to your CV, especially if you've listened to somebody who's particularly renowned in, in the field, that you can say that you took part in a, in a training opportunity with them and you can talk about what you learn and, and how you've implemented it in your classroom and in your teaching practice. I have a bit of a reputation at my school as being a bit of a CPD geek because I, I just love any opportunity to learn something new. Sometimes they're really brilliant, sometimes not so much. But days like these as well are fantastic for, for just kind of honing your craft and, and figuring out what works for you and what doesn't and what you want to do moving forward. My second point, which Pilar sort of touched on, is um, all of the kind of multitude of resources and, and communities there are out there. So I would also recommend joining as many Facebook groups as you can find. Um, and also all the Twitter communities. So a couple of my favourites on Facebook are the Secondary MFL Matters group, which I was told before I'd even started my training by my own Spanish teacher, she told me to join that. And that has been a fantastic resource for the last six years. Um, there's also Secondary MF, well, MFL Teaching Job Facebook group. So if you're relocating or looking for your first role, there's lots of opportunities posted in there. And then like Pilar said as well, there's um, specific groups for teaching A-level Spanish or A-level French. And then even more specific, the, the book or the film that you teach. Um, so this year I have inherited the role of uh, leading on Key Stage 5 Spanish. So I'm teaching a film and a play that I have never taught before. Um, so I have depended quite a lot on these Facebook groups um, for Volver and Bernarda Alba. Um, and people are so generous and more than happy to help. And it's great because I've always felt that I'm able to post a problem or ask for a resource because then whenever someone else posts something, I feel like I owe them one back and I will always try and kind of reciprocate that, that favour. Um, Twitter as well is brilliant as well. So there are hundreds of people to follow, not just languages teachers, but teachers in general that talk about pedagogy and teaching practice and share resources um, and it's just nice to see other like minded people who are discussing, you know, issues in teaching nowadays, but also things that they're doing, new ideas. Um, and again, it's that opportunity to kind of magpie and try stuff out. Um, so the hash the MFL Twitterati hashtag is great, but there's just lots of people who, you know, are worth following and, and listening to. Um, like I said, they've saved me many a time, particularly when you're starting out and you're making a lot of things from scratch which does tend to take a lot more time. There's lots and lots of opportunities to ask for, you know, if you're planning something that you really aren't sure about, you can just ask, does anybody have any resources, any ideas, any suggestions? I have, I've lost count of the amount of times I've posted in there asking for, you know, just help. Or if I've got a question that I'm not sure about, um, 
in the last year we've really had a push on students studying their home languages as well and I've coordinated that so students who are native Polish or um, native uh, Punjabi they study they, they study it themselves self-study but then they they sit the GCSE and we were really struggling last year to find uh, people to talk to conduct the speaking exams um, so I you know posted in that has anybody done it before what's people's experience um, we ran Portuguese last year which is a different exam board to what we do for Spanish so I was asking you know what are the differences can I coach someone through Portuguese if I'm a Spanish teacher um, and people are just more than happy to help and these Facebook groups and com Twitter communities have hundreds and thousands of people who you know are really really fantastic and also the bonus is you know freebie resources so you know the, the people will very generously say oh I've made this fantastic resource here you go you don't even have to ask for it sometimes so the amount of times that I will be on the sofa at night scrolling on Facebook and someone has shared something fantastic and I will email it to myself and some mornings when I get into my classroom and log on to my computer I might have five six seven emails from myself all with resources which I'll then forward across to my colleagues or save somewhere just for a rainy day or sometimes they're absolutely perfect spot on for what I need that week and then that saved me a job um, and that's the beauty of the community of, of teachers because you aren't alone and there's no expectation for you to plan everything from scratch because there's always somebody who's already done it before um, and that's great because you can borrow it and take inspiration and tweak it to make it more your style and then the last thing from me is to um, kind of links to the, the previous one but to speak to other people particularly where you're training speak to other teachers but especially outside of your faculty so obviously you will learn a lot a great deal from the other languages teachers but go beyond the languages faculty and speak to other more experienced staff about perhaps an issue that you're having or just general teaching pedagogy and what it's like to be a teacher um, and I've put in bold to look at how people teach and not just how people teach languages because there's so many transferable skills and ideas that you can apply to the languages classroom so my teaching style is very much based on my mentor's teaching style because I obviously learned a lot from her. But it's a combination of other elements of things that I've learned from other people. And I'm quite fortunate that my faculty is a humanities faculty, which includes history and philosophy and obviously French and Spanish. So there were people very close by who I could learn from. But also I've gone I went further afield and looked at you know, some excellent science teachers and maths teachers, and I, I, I'm useless at maths and science, but seeing how they teach is fantastic. And also as someone who's weaker at uh, maths and science, it's great to see how they've explained it. And if I've understood it, how have they managed to make me understand it? And how can I apply that to my own classroom? What we recommend is, so I'm a, a ECT and a trainee mentor as well. What we recommend is for a student perhaps that you are struggling with or maybe has additional needs to conduct a pupil trail so to find what lessons they have maybe five lessons a day and somewhat discreetly follow them throughout the day and see what their different teachers do so you would need to give the teachers a head up or your mentor would give need to give them some notice but how does that pupil behave in science when the classroom is massive and they have workbenches and how does the the teacher deal with that and then go to a music lesson, right, okay, different setting again. How does this teacher deal with this student or what does this teacher do? And then PE might be different, obviously, on a, on a nice day. Um, and then maths and English and science, which core subjects, how do they do things differently? And then it's, it's just, you know, a really nice opportunity. I, as a trainee, sat at the back of lots of classrooms and observed and wrote down feverishly as much as I possibly could reflected on it, used it in my mental meetings, and then applied it to my own teaching practice. Um, so that's that's all from me, really. And I look forward to hearing some questions at the end. Thank you very much. Brilliant, Tom. That's brilliant. And it's really interesting to hear from both of you about how collaborative and helpful mm. other languages teachers are and what a huge um, you know, benefit that can be to to Absolutely, yeah. And so for people joining the profession, that's a really good thing to know, isn't it? That you've got that kind yeah. of support. So I'm going to hand over to Judith now. 
Thank you, uh, Vicky. My name is Judith. I'm a, a German, Spanish and EAL specialist. And like uh, Pilar and Tom were just saying, and, and Vicky was reiterating, uh, really the community is a treasure box. Um, we really are part, um, we're in this together, we're part of a community, and it's about sharing and learning with and from each other. I would like to invite you now, um, if you have a little piece of paper, or you can write it in the chat for now, I'd like to share, and uh, Tom and Pilar, I'd like to invite you as well uh, to do that, to share in the chat, why did you become a, a languages teacher? And if you are somebody thinking about teaching, think about why is it that you would like to become a languages teacher? So just very briefly, what made you want to become a languages teacher? Be lovely to hear your ideas. Um, What is it that drives you uh, to be a teacher? Uh, Tom and Pilar, perhaps if you prefer to speak, perhaps you want to briefly say. Um... Yeah, that's fine. So I, I've just put mine in the chat. So for me, um, I I never had any big kind of plans to be a teacher. It just kind of happened very organically. I was obviously teaching on my uh, year abroad with the British Council. Um, and I got to my fourth and final year of union, didn't really know, but what I did know was that I loved Spanish and I was glad that I had done it as my degree and for my A-levels and I wanted a job that I could use that every single day and I looked at things like grad schemes and, and there was nothing, every, everyone valued a language but there was nothing that explicitly said we need you to speak Spanish for this role so I wanted something that I could I could use that with. I'd worked hard for several years learning it but also it was really important to me so I'm a very passionate linguist and I'm a really big believer in the power of languages um, and I quite enjoy kind of week one when we start with year seven and someone will always say, well, what's the point in learning languages when everyone speaks English? And I kind of relish in that because I look forward to going in with my go to answer of, well, how boring would that be? And think of the, you know, the beauty and the history and the culture behind languages and all of that. And then I kind of just kind of go up with this spiel about why you know it's important to learn other languages. Um, and I do genuinely now, five days a week, use my my language um, and I teach year seven all the way through to year 13 and year seven, eight, nine is obviously quite basic, but then it really gets quite complex and teaching and leading A-level Spanish, where I do my lessons entirely in Spanish yeah. is fantastic. It's, you know, it's like being back in Spain. So for me, it was the opportunity to use something that I loved um, and that's that's exactly what I do. And, and although it wasn't my original plan, I now think, well, I don't know what else I would do. So it, it was obviously the right the right one for me. Amazing. Thank you, Tom. And Vicky, you shared something beautiful as well. Do you just want to briefly say what you shared? Um... I'm not a I'm not a teacher of languages, but I do advocate for languages. Yeah. And it's because uh, I want to pass on the love of learning languages and the benefits that it can bring for people. Um, and I think that's really important for me. The light bulb moment was going on a school exchange. You know, before that, I'd done languages, but it didn't really mean very much. But that's something like that really brings it to life for you when you, you know, live with a French family and suddenly have a chance to really use the language. Yeah, absolutely. So I hope that other people, you know, people, I think it's important that people get that experience, yeah. whether it's by actually traveling or going or having a brilliant, inspiring teacher that gives them that experience. Absolutely. And, and bringing in authentic resources from all around the world so that you can travel within your classroom. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And uh, and I think it's also about exploring when you're learning a long language, you're exploring different parts of your own identity um, within you. And, and, and you can really uh, make links towards your own, the languages that you speak, the languages within your community and really build bridges. And so what I would like to ask you, as you have thought about what, what your reason was or is to train, uh, if you're going to, to train in the future, keep that, write that down in a little piece of paper somewhere and keep that somewhere in, a, in your pencil case so that when there is a moment when you're feeling a little bit stressed, um, when something, when a lot is going on, that you go back to it and you hold on to that, to that treasure that you remember, this is why I got into teaching. 
The treasure box also serves another function. And that is, I'm a true believer in seeing every learner as a treasure box. They have their own experience, their own voice, they, their own passions. And we want to explore what those are and then bring those ideas into the classroom to really provide a space where they feel safe, but where they also feel that they can share their love, their interests, their passions. It also, the treasure box serves also another function, and that is in relation to managing a relationship and managing behavior. And here, I, I really think the work of Carol Dweck is quite useful. So she talks about the importance of fostering intrinsic motivation. Now, how do you do that? Initially, by by fostering extrinsic motivation and then building through that intrinsic motivation. Now, how can you do that? It is through praise, but through specific praise. So in, instead of just saying, well done, you say, well, well done for being so brave to raise your hand today and actually give your answer. I know that was that was challenging for you. For some of us, it's easier to speak in public, and for others, it's really it's really quite daunting. And so, with the with that positive praise that we're we're giving, we're putting loads of treasure into the treasure box, and we're building that relationship with our learners. And then, when there is a moment when we actually have to tell somebody off or say, look, this wasn't okay because so-and-so, we're taking just a little treasure out of the box. But the box stays with loads and loads of treasure. And that means that the learner still feels, oh, there's so much good that we've built together and that that little bit that goes out is just a tiny little bit of the positive experience um, that we're building. So that then leads me on to the second one, which is about phone calls. And I would really invite you, I know it's very daunting when you're starting as a, as a trainee teachers to make phone calls, but it's really something that you can practice and you can learn. And you've got people around you in your mentors, your uh, peers, you've got uh, other members of the departments where you will be um, working in that will support you in learning how to make a phone call. And here I would, I, I always remember how my mentor said to me, go and call everyone in your tutor group and call them at the beginning of the year to tell something positive. I cannot tell you how powerful that was I would make phone calls to parents and carers and they would be like, oh, what's wrong? What did they do? And I'd be like, no, no, I'm calling to say that today they did this and this and I'm so proud of them. And I just wanted to share that with you. So many were so happy to hear this. And some of them even said, I've never had a phone call to say that, that my child had done something well. So it's again about building these relationships with parents, carers, with the wider community and acknowledging the, the positive, the good that is there. And also signaling, as was said before, also cherishing the, the languages and the cultures that the pupils are, uh, the learners are engaged in, in their, in their home and in their community. And to praise that and see that as a real treasure that they're bringing into the classroom and to foster that pride that they speak multiple languages, that they are engaged in multiple cultures. And the final one is about community. And uh, Tom and Pilar and Vicky have spoken about this before, but it's just to reiterate, we are in this together and we are here to support each other. So if you ever feel that you need some support, do reach out. You are not alone in this. We are in this together. We're a strong community and we look out for each other and we support each other. And on that note, I would like to invite you to join the Association for Language Learning. I'm an, uh, an, I've been a volunteer at the Association for Language Learning for many years. I'm now uh, really thrilled to be the president-elect. And uh, I would really invite you to get involved um, as a, already now and to also seek out 
the, you can join uh, online webinars that we have, but we also have uh, branches, networks and hubs in different places around England and Wales. So do reach out, look on our website to find the place that is nearest to you to meet with other teachers in the community, to share ideas, to share expertise. This is what we offer. Uh, Pilar already mentioned, we've got the Language World Conference this year on the 8th and 9th of March. Please join us if you'd like um, to, to, if you can, um, to be a part of that uh, CPD over two days. Um, you also get access to AllNet, uh, which is a newsletter uh, through our membership. You get access to the Languages Today magazine, which is a magazine written by teachers for teachers. And we always, always are looking for people who would like to share their expertise. It's never too early and it's never too late. So please, you've got ideas to share. So please reach out to us um, if you've got an idea to share via the website um, or to write for the language um, uh, Languages Today magazine. Or if you've got ideas for sessions that we should host. For example, um, a couple of years ago now, we launched the um, Arabic language zone because there, was, there were a lot of teachers who said, look, we really want to start this. We also launched a Mandarin language zone and a home heritage and community advisory group, as well as a decolonizing the curriculum secondary special interest group and the decolonizing the curriculum primary um, languages group. And we ha also have an area which is called learning from the classroom, where ideas on research um, are shared that come from uh, student teachers, from MA student, PhD students. And we also have dedicated um, a support for you as a trainee teacher and also as you move uh, into your ECT phase. So here I've just got an excerpt. So we've got on our uh, website a dedicated page for you with loads and loads of support. And we also run a webinars, monthly webinars uh, for you. I'll put the link in the chat in a minute. And there's one um, coming up at the end of November. So please do join it as well and to be part um, of the community. <laughs> Brilliant, Judith. Thank you so much for that. Such a lot of information. Um, th there's one question that I want to ask you that uh, hasn't really come up yet. And I know that something that um, worries a lot of people about their training year, the first few years of teaching, is about um, how do you manage your workload? How do you manage your workload without becoming, uh, with the, without becoming overwhelmed with stress? I don't know who would like to start. Maybe Tom first, then Pilar, and then Judith. Yeah. Um, so, as one of uh, another thing that I do on the side is I work um, with the Department of Education at teacher recruitment events, and this is a question that we get constantly, um, particularly from career changers who perhaps have a family. Um, we'll ask, well, how you know will it consume my life? Because all you seem to hear are the horror stories rather than the good things. Um, and I always say the same thing. Um, about yes it is a it is a full-on role and it is one that's very busy but if you make use of communities and things like shared planning within your faculty that will make your life a lot easier for me in the early days it was more intense because I was planning a lot of things from scratch I was a massive perfectionist so I wanted everything to look beautiful and perfect and um, so things took me a lot longer I was slower because I was still learning but the beauty of teaching is it gets a lot easier as the years go by. So now I'm in my sixth year. I do very, very little planning because I just reuse everything from the year before. And all I have to do maybe is tweak it for the group's ability, do some printing. Um, but on the whole, it's already been done for me. Um, it can seem quite overwhelming in the beginning. But for me, I always enjoyed that because I was enjoying what I was doing. And I do genuinely very much, you know, I'm a passionate linguist and I love Spanish. So I was always quite happy doing what I was doing. And then yeah. kind of past, you know, future me was was very grateful for it um, because it, a lot of it was was already done for me. For me, I write everything down. If I'm busy, I don't like everything in my head. That's what stresses me out. I write everything down so that I've got a to-do list and I tick it off methodically. And now... I don't do anything in the evenings, don't do anything at the weekends. I'd rather get in early, leave a little bit later. Um, but I categorically don't work at home now. So it is possible, it can be done. 
brilliant. Uh, Pilar, do you have anything to add? Are you on mute? I think. Uh, sorry. So I am in, in the situation that some mentioned, um, having had a, a career before and I have a family, I have two small children. So um, it was certainly very challenging in the first and second year. Um, as, as, as Tom has said, I think it's very important to liberate your mind as much as you can. I think uh, that is, that's something I, I, all, um, I also do, write everything down. And again, reach out to your community um, and, and try and be happy with less. Uh, sometimes it's, it's better to uh, spend some time with your family and your loved ones and um, deliver a lesson that is possibly perfectly fine, but you consider um, less than it should in terms of, of its level um, and protect yourself um, and your family life and your free time. I do not really have um, a formula for this. It does get easier as years go um, uh, go on and you um, get to teach the same courses several times and you get very familiar with the um, with the specs of work um, that obviously help. And what Tom says um, is important that you have some resources that then you tweak. Um, yeah, it, it, it gets easier as, as time goes by. Um, that's, that's what I can say, really. Thanks. And one uh, piece of advice I heard from a, a teacher at a previous event was to make sure that you spend some time doing something you really like, whether mm. it's going for a run or doing your salsa dancing classes or whatever yeah. it is. But you make sure that, that you definitely have some parts of your week that are carved out with things for you and not uh, schoolwork. Uh, and you, that, and, and yeah. adding to that, I think you can have moments of inspiration uh, uh, and ideas that come from those lovely enjoyment moments rather than from being sitting down in front of your computer trying to think again and again the perfect structure for a lesson. There are ideas and, and things that, you, you, you know, you will... Come, will come to you while you are enjoying your free time and your life and, and protecting uh, yourself, so to say. Judith, what would you like to add? Um, well, just to say, we're all consistently learning. So mm -hmm. you you will plan a lesson and then something unexpected might happen. There might be a bee suddenly in the classroom. <laughs> So yeah. these things happen and you, you will learn with time to adapt. So always think I will give my best as I go into the lesson and then I will reflect afterwards. And next time, yes, I will change things. Um, I will change things because I will reflect on what worked well and uh, what I could might do differently. Different learners, different classes react differently. Yeah. And also things change whether you teach a lesson period one or period five. Uh, yes, that's the yes. reality. So be kind to yourself, be kind to others. You are learning. So yeah. take the feedback that you get in stride and see it as a way to help you improve. We all want you to succeed. We all want you to be part of the languages community. So just keep that close to heart. Um, and like Vicky was saying, really do something for yourself as well. And also, be share with each other as peers so for example your language skills make use of the fact that you come in your group as you're teaching you speak different languages so make use of that as well to help you develop your language skills in the languages you are teaching and also to help each other out could you check this for a minute just mm -hmm. to see how this is or could you help me with this so that alleviates some of the pressure of you as well i said you're not alone we're in this together okay we've got one minute left and michaela has asked you've all mentioned lots of useful books and social media groups but she didn't manage to write them down could we put them in the chat i've put down secondary mfl facebook group but i couldn't remember the others perhaps if people would write them in the chat or maybe just mention a couple of the names of the books that you mentioned before that would be great in our final minute uh i could mention what i um so the books on behavior management that i really found useful uh, are classroom behavior by bill rogers and uh running the room by tom bennett 
Um, and then um, MFL groups, the Guild group, uh, the Global Innovative Language Teachers is one of them. The one that um, Tom mentioned, um, how is it, Tom? Um, I, I, well, I have, there's so many I, I, I am a member of, but I think the one I, I like is We Teach MFL. And then in terms of blogs, the Esmeralda Salgado's blog, Botone Salgado, she's uh, fantastic. What she shares in there, in terms of um, if you're a teacher of Spanish. And um, for German, um, I I really, really like um, Silvia Bastos' blog. She also shares lots of resources and, and useful tips. Um, and her blog, I think, is called... Um, um well if you if you google it uh, frau um silvia bastos is frau frau Bast, frau uh, basto i think it is the blog this is some of the things i i share i think the main ones then okay brilliant well we've gone one minute over i don't know whether we get a <laughs> we get cut off but thank you all very much for your contributions that was absolutely brilliant and i hope it gave people um an insight into how to survive their training year. And for those of you who are um, doing that at the moment, welcome to the profession. Keep in touch with all of us, with the Association for Language Learning and the British Council, and we'll give you lots of support. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.